So we have a dripping faucet in the bathroom. This isn't the sound of the faucet. What you're hearing is a faithful reenactment of my wife asking me to fix it. And I can't blame her. I checked the machinery's handbook, and although my drip rate isn't quite DEF CON 5, the amount of time this has been going on puts me in the get her done range. Now, although this seems like a clear-cut case of spousal abuse, cartridge replacement, I ran into a few problems. Problem number one, I don't have fingernails. I don't have the tool to get this thing apart. You may notice that didn't stop me from trying, though. I need some sort of gigantic security hex, the kind with a big hole in the middle. I'm hoping to avoid making a tool for this, so I'm going to try to cobble something together from stuff I have on hand. Problem number two. Now these things aren't usually that expensive. It looks like they're typically anywhere from $15 to $25 or so. I just happen to be the lucky guy with that one special faucet. This is a ceramic disc or a ceramic plate valve. And we'll get into that in a minute. Now they're not meant to be user serviceable. And I don't know about you, but to me that sounds like a challenge. I'll likely end up having to buy the replacement. But I thought it might be interesting trying to take a shot at this thing. Maybe save a hundred bucks and use that to buy more film and processing to keep making videos. Now I think these things are supposed to last forever. And forever, technically speaking, means about 20, 25 years or so. This thing happens to be going on 10. Now before I decided to take this apart, my first course of action was to sort of wash it all as one piece. You know, maybe some debris or something got in there. And I did that a couple of times without any luck. Now these are called ceramic disc or ceramic plate valves because the actual valve is a pair of ceramic discs. As I move the stem, that disc in there opens up one or both holes depending if I'm doing hot, cold, or a mix of the two. Here you see a white ceramic plate and sort of that dark gray ceramic disc. If any debris gets in between those two surfaces or there's any scratching, that certainly would cause a leak. Though the first thing I'm noticing is sort of the O-ring residue on the bottom of the ceramic face doesn't look continuous. So the first thing I might try, if I get lucky, is reverse sort of this little seal here. The face feels a little I don't know, fuzzy. With any luck, that's a simple 2D part, and it'll still fit when I flip it. Picking at it with a sharp tool is always a good idea. Now let's see if I can't get these ceramic plates out of here. Through the plastic, I can see a couple of little steps. There's one on one side and two on the other. Because this part snapped in from the top with an O-ring on it, I assume this is what was holding it in. So with any luck, that was easier than I thought. So what you're looking at here is the two valve faces, the two ceramic parts. These would sit like that. And one slides on the other. The seal being created by the incredible smoothness of both those faces. I don't know if you've been following Mr. Pete's videos. He's done a two-parter so far on surface roughness. I think he's down in the 64 or 32 average roughness range. For scale, something like this is sub-micron, so less than 1, probably 0 0.5, or maybe even less than that. Now, I've been looking at these under high magnification, and I don't really see any scratches. 
I mean, it probably doesn't take much. The surface in the center looks a little dull compared to the perimeter. So something has happened there. I suppose I don't know enough about these things to recognize if that's the problem or not. They are a bit dirty. Maybe that was it. But I don't really see any smoking gun here. So I'll be honest with you, I expected to find these surfaces scratched and thought I might even get into some honing, or at least trying to hone those faces back. And I could have sworn I had submicron lapping paste, but it turns out the smallest I've got is one micron. That's dia paste from DMT, diamond compound. But now that I see these surfaces, not having the right paste is probably for the best, as I bet I would have done a real number on these things. So I cleaned off all the parts best I could, just some warm water and compressed air. As I was doing that, it dawned on me that that white, goopy, gross stuff was probably some kind of a lubricant. And since it had sort of uh, caked up a bit, I figured it must have been something more Teflon instead of silicone based. So I added a few dabs of food grade Teflon lube. As I've been putting this together, I realized that the only sealing surface in this valve body are the actual ceramic plates. So water comes in down from the bottom, hits this plastic part, and then if there weren't a seal here, I mean it goes, you know, fills those holes and then stops at the ceramic plates. But without a seal here, it could just walk its way completely around the valve body and out the faucet. And since there's no face seal here, there must be some kind of a gasket or o-ring inside the body of the faucet itself. Something that this could press down against to create that secondary seal. I didn't really think to look down in there, so I'm going to do that before I install this. If there are o-rings, maybe I'll replace them. If there's something funny, I might just try to flip it over like I did with this red one in here. And sure enough, there are a couple of seals down in the faucet body. There are some strange ones though. They're like cup seals or piston seals. They're spring-loaded from the bottom. They don't look bad, but I stretched the springs out just a hair. Figure a little more preload probably couldn't hurt. Alright, so that does it. Maybe I got lucky here. Maybe it was just one of the seals down in the faucet body. Maybe it just needed a little cleaning. I'll be accepting wagers down in the comment section for how long you think this fix will last. But if nothing else, it bought me some time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>